Hey there. Uh, the other day I was talking with some traders uh, who are based outside of the U.S. and they have some restrictions on the type of platforms that they, they can use. Um, my platform will give me what's called beta weighted deltas, uh, in particular weighting my portfolio to the to the S&P 500, um, the S&P 500 ETF, the SPY or, or the spiders. And it occurred to me uh, we've talked about not this topic in particular, but the pieces that would make up this topic in different videos. We've talked about the beta, calculating the beta of the of a stock. Uh, we've definitely talked ad nauseum about uh, delta and you know the derivative of the option price with respect to the underlying stock price. And uh, I figured I'd just do a quick video on how to calculate it if your trading platform doesn't give you that number. Now, what specifically are we talking about here? Uh, so the idea is this, if I have a position, let's click on uh, Microsoft here. I have what amounts to, well, what is an iron condor in Microsoft. They have a bunch of contracts that have some sort of delta associated with that. And in this case, let's close that. Uh, this, I'm pretty damn flat. I'm delta of 0.71. So I have the equivalent of less than one share, less than one share long of Microsoft. But the question is, what would that be if I were to cast it in terms of the SPY, SPY? Uh, my platform does that for me. Uh, these are numbers are here. And the advantage of looking at looking at it like this is the fact that we could have a bunch of very disparate underlines. Like I have gold, I have uh, EEM, I have the British pound, and um, all of these have different their own different deltas, especially the pound because it has a different uh, different multiplier. Um, so it's nice to put them all on the same footing. So I could see if my portfolio is net long, net short, and I can get some handle on what would happen if the market, uh, the S&P 500 moves by a, a given percentage. So this is pretty straightforward actually, and it should be pretty quick. So let's just jump over to a notebook and get into it. Now we've done all of this before in bits and pieces in various places. So I'm gonna make a rather judicious use of cut and paste in this, and then kind of document this as we go along. Um, for our imports, all we need is pandas. Uh, we're pulling in just CVS, uh, CSV files that I've downloaded from Yahoo Finance, uh, NumPy, Matplotlib, just to do the plotting. And since we've uh, used SciPy stats and the linear, linear regression model out of that, um, out of that uh, package, we're going to continue using that. And that's why we're using NumPy. We could pr presumably do this all in pandas, but since we've used um, these things in the past, we're going to kind of repeat that process here. So I have a rather complicated position on an EEM, and um, it's a short strangle combined with a, a long vertical call spread. And as of this day, uh, let's see what the price of EEM is. Uh, EEM price as of this day is equal to this. It's about 43 and change, almost $44. And we're going to denote this with the symbol uh, E just because there can be a lot of different symbols around so I want them to be as, as unique as possible. And since we want to cast this in, in the terms of SPY Delta, we're going to need the price of the SPY and that's SPY um, and that is equal to, that is roughly equal to $323 and change and I'm going to denote this with the uh, symbol S. So S is the, the price of the SPY. And my trading platform tells me that the Delta I have in EEM right now is equal to it is equal to a little more than 22. So delta in EEM is equal to that. And I'm going to denote that with a capital delta and underscore E. So um, delta underscore E. So I fixed one typo here. Actually, let's fix another typo. This should be a capital delta. There we go. And let's put in a line break here just so this is uh, clearer to read. Looks good. Uh, let's pull in our data. I downloaded historical data from Yahoo Finance for EEM for the last five years and SPY for the last five years. And here I'm calculating the daily percent change uh, as a fraction, not as an actual percentage um, of the closing price for those days. So let me pull those in. And because we're going to be using NumPy, the first element of this array is going to be a, not a number. If I were to come down here and go uh, print SPY PCT, you notice that the first, uh, first element is not a number, and that's going to cause an issue. So let's just delete the first element from each of those arrays. So we do that. We pull out um, 
the, 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 the row from the, not the row, the column from the pandas table, convert it to a numpy vector, and delete the first, uh, first array. So the next step is going to be to calculate the beta coefficient of this stack. So if you recall, um, let's first visualize uh, what these data look like. So if we plot them here, um, another bit of notation. I've denoted the change in the price of uh, the spiders as ds. So this is ds over s. This is the fractional change in, in um, the price of spy divided by the price at that given time, likewise for EEM. And we get this. And you remember the beta value is the slope of the linear regression line. So let's fit a regression line to this using the um, linear regression library from the SciPy stats module. So there's the regression line. Let's print, print out the slope. So um, print slope, um, let's call it actually beta. Print beta is equal to slope. So the beta coefficient is here. It's almost one, it's 0.997-ish. Um, <clears throat> and just to make everything clear later on, let's just create a variable called beta and set that equal to slope so that we don't have to, we don't forget um, what is what. And I'm going to actually make a notation about these uh, DE and uh, DS uh, variables. So up here I wrote it down, a little bit of notation. DE is the differential change in EEM and DS is the differential change in SPY price. And before moving on, I actually, I, I actually want to plot out what this regression line looks like just um, to make sure our numbers make sense. So what I'm going to do is come down here and say x is equal to np.lin space. I'm going to go from minus 0 0.1 to 0 0.1. And then y is going to be equal to, it's the regression line, so it's going to be equal to the slope, which is our beta, times x, plus the intercept, intercept. And I should be able to come down here and just do a plt.plot, x comma y, and I'm going to plot it as a black line. There we go. So that, that looks reasonable. So a bit more notation. Um, let's see. Notation. Our delta of EEM, so our capital delta underscore E, <clears throat> from the definition of delta, it's equal to the derivative of our combined option position with respect to the price of EEM. So this is equal to the E, I'm sorry, DC, where C is our combined uh, option contract prices uh, with respect to E. But we would actually like to calculate this derivative, and this is the whole point of the exercise, with respect to the price of SPY. So we want our EEM position differentiated with respect to SPY. And this beta will provides that, that link between the two, because the slope of this line is DE over E divided by DS over S. So let me write that down in my notation here. So here we go. I did the algebra uh, and just kind of cleaned it up a bit. So our beta is equal to DE over DS uh, times S divided by E. And what we would really like to calculate, of course, is this. So I'm going to denote it as delta underscore S. And that's, as we said before, it's the derivative of our EEM options with respect to SPY. And just by doing some algebra, we get this relationship here. So obviously we know we just calculated our beta. Our trading platform gives us the delta with respect to EEM, and we know the price of EEM and SPY. So we just have a simple uh, algebraic formula where we can plug in our numbers. So here's our EEM delta from above, EEM price, SPY price. Here's our formula here. I'm just printing out the results, and we get a delta of 2.9. So my trading platform does calculate this number, and I get the exact same same thing um, here as I do there. So yeah, pretty simple. I'll clean that up and put it up on GitHub. Um, obviously, translating this is something like Excel or some other spreadsheet is straightforward, but if you uh, need help doing that, feel free to hit me up in a comment, and I can do a quick video on that. So until next time, see ya.